Hey, what up? I just want to show you how to install the Windows uh, 2010 platform SDK tools, which I believe are version 10.0, depending on what version numbers you're looking at. Because I say forget Visual Studio 2019 and beyond. Forget all that junk. With these, you remember how much everybody liked Windows 7? Well, these tools uh, more or less target Windows 7 Service Pack 1. So you can go all the way back to at least Windows 2000 with them. And you can go forward to Windows 10 and I believe even Windows 11 with them. So my particular operating system is Windows 8.1 with, uh, I have like, with this start menu, I have like the old Windows 7 style start menu in there for reasons you probably understand if you ever used any of the Windows 8 line of operating systems. But all that being said, anyway, I just want to run through this because I just got done installing the Windows uh, 20, 2017 tools with the Windows 2019 installer and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, it was causing me so much problems. They've deprecated the old school Windows XP compatibility and whatnot, of course, because that leads to lower support costs for Microsoft. And uh, it also obsoletes the old operating systems that they produce. Therefore, lower support costs and you now are incentivized to buy their new operating systems. Huh. But for no real reason, you know, you know, no reason for the developer. It just makes everything ridiculous. So anyway, if you're one of those people like me that what you would do is you would actually download. Um, come on, thing open. I forgot to open up this browser, my apologies. So you would install the, uh, what would we call it? I'll just go to uh, Visual Studio. I'll just search for that so you can follow along and figure out how to drill right in there with me real quick. So I'm going to scroll down and, wow, really? All this other stuff. So what do we have here? Visual Studio Microsoft.com. That looks like the good one. That looks like where we want to go. If you hear some background noise, that's because it's dinner time and my wife is handling that business. So I apologize for that. But anyway, here we go. We're at the Visual Studio and now you can see even Visual Studio 2022 is about to come out at the time of this recording. Ooh, big deal. Um, I'm not impressed with it personally. I, I looked at all the new features for the... Um, let me fix this. For the Windows 11 coming up and the only thing in windows 11 that i thought was like oh maybe that's cool was the haptic feedback for a pin tool so other than that i'm not really seeing any any reason to even consider that so what we'll go here is downloads up here at the top downloads So anyway, I'm just trying to keep it real for the old schoolers out there. That's what my goal is. If you're into the new bloated junk, see you later. Probably already out of here by now. Okay, so we're in downloads. I'm going to scroll most of the way down the page. I'm going to click Visual Studio 2019. By the time you see this, it might say 2022 there. Who knows? And I'm going to go to, uh, where is it? Scrolling up and down here. Visual Studio Community. I'm sorry, I'm not going to click Visual Studio. I'm going to click Other Tools and Frameworks. I'm going to scroll down. I have to apologize. Why am I not seeing this? Tools for Visual Studio 2019. That's what always gets me. And it Tools for whatever Visual Studio. When you see that point, that should be it. And we'll scroll down here. And these build tools, hmm, that's not it either. Where is it? Didn't find what you were looking for. Older downloads. So I clicked that thing at the bottom. Didn't find what you were looking for. I was just here, so I have to imagine that they've been, uh... so I'm scrolling down this page. Other tools, frameworks, so I'm at the Visual Studio Microsoft Com VS Older Dash Downloads. And I'm going to click on Other Tools and Frameworks. 
And... Wow, maybe they have just, like, literally in the last day or so, they may have deprecated this stuff. So I imagine that the the tooling is still available online, so it would be... Um, what is it called? It's called the SDK 7.1 with .NET Framework 4. But it used to, I mean... I may not just be going in at the right angle to find it on that website, but it, these tools are available. If I would have just searched for SDK, it would have taken me there. So this is the SDK 7.18279. But what we want is like an 8442. So what I need to type in is SDK 7.1 ISO. Those should be the keywords that get us there. So as soon as this page loads, yeah, 8442, that's the little magic number there. That is the right one. And you can probably drill in through the Visual Studio Tools website and end up here as well. So if you scroll down here, it's the Microsoft Windows SDK for 7 and .NET Framework 4 ISO. And if we come down here and click Details, you can see there's the details you get the option between these three ISOs here. So I'll just go ahead and click download and get us to that page. This first one is the 32 bit only tools. This second one is the IA 60. That's the, that little middle of the road, early two thousands Intel 64 architecture that 99.99% of people probably don't want. And this one with the X here is both the 32-bit tooling and the 64-bit tooling. So you'll click that one, assuming that you want the 64-bit tooling as well. Um, the x86-64 tooling, then click Next down here. And that should prompt you to download it. So go ahead and save that. And uh, if you're using a version of Windows prior to Windows 10, then you'll probably want to download 7-Zip, which will allow you to extract the ISO. Uh, most people are probably using Windows 10 or 11 at this point, and in which case you should be able to just mount that ISO. If you have trouble, download 7-Zip, open it like that. I'm going to cancel it because I already have it. I'm going to close out this browser. And so what you do if you open that ISO or mounted it, there will be a setup folder in there. Don't run the setup tools in the root folder. Double click into that setup folder and that's what this effectively is. And then you'll scroll down there and you'll see the SDK setup. You'll run this. But the deal is, what I should have shown before, is that if you go into your control panel and you go to, it probably looks different than mine, but you go to your program and features to uninstall a program, uninstall or change a program, how, whatever you got to do to get there. You'll scroll down and you'll get to this Microsoft Visual C stuff. And if you have the Microsoft Visual C 2010 uh, redistributables already installed right there, you'll need to uninstall them because it installs, I have it scribbled down right here somewhere. It's going to install or attempt to install. Actually, I don't. Um, 10.0.3 something. So if it can't do that, if you have this newer version, it's going to cry and it's going to quit the setup. So uninstall these two things if you have them. And then back to where we're at, you'll double click this setup.exe. You might have to right click. Um, you might have to right click and run as administrator maybe. And then it's going to go in and probe everything you got. I've already installed it, so this is going to look different. Oh, I forgot about that. That Let's see. Okay, but you'll eventually, if you click I agree and stuff, and then click next, you'll end up at a screen that looks identical to this. So here's my settings, so you can see exactly what I have installed here. So I've gone through, set all this. I unchecked those Itanium libraries, because again, that's the thing that most people won't use. If you, for some reason, are like uninterested in 64-bit libraries, you could unselect that. Um, x86 is going to be the most compatible. That's going to get you back through like Windows 2000. 
uh, at least through Windows 10, I would assume Windows 11 as well. This tooling you need, uh, Visual C, I, did, I got rid of the .NET junk because I don't use it. I think it's, it's junk personally. This Microsoft Help system you might want to leave checked. I personally use the, uh, what is it called, like the Win32 Help CHM file. I use an old school one, but you can check that if you want. That will give you the offline help system, and if you don't want to use their online one or that CHM file. Uh, the application verifier... Just some extra little handy tools there, debugging tools. The redistributable packages, I think you could get away with, uh, if you have the newer ones, there are slightly newer ones that then come with this. Um, you could probably uncheck that and then reinstall those ones that you had to uninstall if you still have the setup files for it. Otherwise, just leave this checked. And of course, you'll click Next. Here's real quick again, samples, the headers, the libraries, the compilers, the tools. Um, these things are optional right here, and you probably want this too. So then you click Next and follow the instructions, and it will install. I'm going to cancel because I already have it. Okay, and that should give you the Windows 7 tooling. And what you can do here is you can see there's the command prompt. If I go into my all files and I scroll down to um, Microsoft Windows SDK 7.1, and you can see here's all the junk that gets installed with it. You can click this Windows 7.1 command prompt or maybe right click it and create some shortcut somewhere. And once you're in here, it's going to automatically open up to targeting Windows 7 64-bit debug build. So this old school or slightly old school tooling is the set environment. And you can do that and you can see there's your options. So I'd recommend doing set environment. Um, you can either do an x86 or an x64, uh, and then you could target, you know, like XP if you want. I haven't noticed that that, uh, that targeting makes much difference, whether you pick XP or Windows 7 or whatever. And then pit, usually you'll probably want to pit a release build, especially if you plan on distributing it. And then now you can see up here it's Windows XP, uh, x86 release. So the x86 is 32-bit. I personally recommend that unless you're doing a lot of like floating point operations or something that you might benefit from having the 64-bit optimizations for. And there you go. And then you can see that uh, we have CL, the C++ compiler right there, version 16. Um, the reason that's version 16, most of the tooling's version 10, but this is based on Microsoft C back before it was visual c would be version 16 right but uh let's see if we can get it to say cl 16 da, 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 da. anyway and then you'll have link and then you'll also have a uh, ml for the there's the 10.00 tooling you can see which is of course the microsoft assembler and there you go. And if you wanted to compile something, you just blah, 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 blah. And you'd be ready to do it. So anyway, that's how in this day and age, you can still use the arguably the best uh, tooling for compiling C programs, uh, assembling MASM programs, and linking them as well. Thanks a lot for watching.